My name is Bill Frizzell and I am from New Zealand, from Aotearoa, the land of the long white cloud. To me, the Tiki's a classic New Zealand little character. I think primarily they were above the doorway to the meeting house at a pa, the pa is the village, and they kept away bad spirits. So they were good things. Traditionally, they were made out of punamu, which is greenstone or jade. In fact, I've got a piece of greenstone that's not carved as a tiki, and I think it was even blessed by a local chief before they gave it to me, so it was really imbibed with good vibes. That was my father speaking about when he lived in New Zealand as a young boy, and I'm his daughter, Amber Frizzell, we have a fridge magnet that's of a heitiki, which is a New Zealand symbol that originated from the Maoris. I have it in my hands right now. It's small, it's beautiful, deep green, and it's carved to resemble a human form. The heitikis are not always gender specific. They are usually either genderless or sometimes female, and this is generally to do with the idea that they are associated with fertility. They have a head and body, arms and legs, but they don't look quite human because they have enormous mouths and big eyes and curved limbs and an odd-shaped head. Traditionally, tikis were worn by women. I think because it was a symbol of fertility, which is associated more with women because of childbirth and motherhood, but men could also wear them. It wasn't restricted to a certain gender, the same way that the tiki is genderless most of the time. So finding this fridge magnet led me on to ask one of the Pit River's staff if they had any tickies in the museum. And they actually had four. I'm by one right now. This one is an actual Maori tiki. And the plaque underneath it says, Nephrite Pendant, Maori People, North Island, New Zealand. Such pendants, known as hei tiki, were treasured heirlooms, increasing in power or mana over time. This heitiki is said to have been in the family of Tipahu for 400 years. It's quite a bit larger than the one I have in my hand and it has a rope connected to it because tikis were often hung around the neck. The prefix hei is loosely translated as to hang around the neck or to wear. So you can get hei manu, which is the bird form of a heitiki. Looking at the Pit Rivers Museum records, people don't know exactly where it came from, what it means. So I asked my father how aware he was of the tiki and the symbolism of what it meant. My father isn't Maori, he's white, but he was born in New Zealand. So he was constantly aware of the symbol around him as he was growing up. They were everywhere. Little plastic ones, they'd hand them out. There was ice creams that had tikis on them. The white man appropriated that image and just used it everywhere. My brother had an exhibition in New Zealand where he painted tikis in different art forms. He did a Picasso one and a Gauguin and all these, and it caused such a furore because there was a Pākehā white man messing around with this classic Māori iconic character and they closed the exhibition down. It caused such a cultural furore. It really touched a nerve. It's in that New Zealand history book I've got that caused such a stir. It was seen as something that was not appropriate because this sacred symbol had been taken by a white man and distorted and changed into something that it shouldn't have been. After I interviewed my father, he took down something from the shelf that I'd always seen, but never really seen. It'd just been there. It's a beautiful hand-carved wooden tiki in an odd sort of style. It's longer, and the man or woman is playing a flute. It was gifted to him, which is traditional. And similar to the tikis, it has beautiful, beautiful eyes. After my findings, I feel a lot more connected to my history and the history I share with my dad and my sister. And it sparked interest in me to find the differences between artefacts that are indigenous and things that people have colonised an area have taken and used in inspiration, and if that's appropriate or not.